In this video, you're going to learn how to write a quadratic function in vertex form by using the completing the square method. So we're going to take a quadratic function and put it into this form, and we're going to follow these steps here to kind of help us through this. So we're going to go through four examples. Let's start with this first example, and then you can practice some on your own. Now, the first thing you want to do here is you want to move the constant, meaning just like this number, over to the other side, just to kind of get it out of the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides of this equation. And we can think of f of x as like y. So I'm going to say y minus 2 equals x squared minus 6x. Okay, now what you want to do is you want to factor out the leading coefficient a. Now what do I mean by the leading coefficient? It's the number that comes in front of this x squared term. And in this case, it's a 1. So factoring out a 1 is not really going to change anything. But if it was a 2 or a 3, we'd want to make sure we factor out just the leading coefficient. So now for step three, we're going to do the completing the square process, which what we do is we take the b value divided by two and we square it. So the b value, remember it goes ax squared plus bx plus c. So we take half of this b value, negative six. So you can go over here to the side, negative six divided by two squared. Negative six divided by two is negative three. Negative three squared is equal to nine. Now, out of thin air, we're going to add 9 to the right side of the equation, but to keep it balanced, we're going to have to add 9 to the left side, so we're not changing anything. We're keeping it balanced. So now what we're going to do is let's go ahead and simplify here. We've got y plus 7 equals x squared minus 6x plus 9. What we did is we uh, created a perfect square trinomial. So what we're going to do is now we're going to factor this perfect square trinomial. And I'll give you a little bit of a hint here. It's always going to factor to x and then half of this b value, the quantity squared. So this is negative 6. Half of negative 6 is negative 3. If this was plus 6x, I would write plus 3. And that's how you would factor it. Now, if you want to check your work, you can take x minus 3 times another x minus 3, multiply that out, and you'll see that you get back that original trinomial. So now we're down to y plus 7 equals x minus 3 squared. The last step is you want to get the y value by itself, the, the y variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides of this equation. And now you can see that y is equal to the quantity x minus 3 squared minus 7. So it's in that vertex form right here. And you can see that our vertex is going to be at not negative 3, but the opposite, positive 3 comma negative 7. That's where the parabola is going to bend. The vertex is at 3, negative 7. The a value here, you don't see it, but it's understood to be a 1. When it's positive, it tells us the parabola is opening up. If it was negative, it would be opening down. And that's our vertex form. So let's take a look at a slightly more challenging example. Okay, let's go through the steps. So the first step I like to think about is moving the constant to the other side of the equation just to get it out of the way. So we're going to subtract this 1 over to the other side. I want to make sure we keep the equation balanced. f of x is like y, so we'll just write this as y minus 1 equals negative 2x squared minus 8x. Now, step number two, we want to think about factoring out the leading coefficient, or the a value. So in this case, you can see this number in front of the x squared is negative 2. We're going to factor that negative 2 out. So this is going to leave us with x squared plus 4x. And I'm going to leave a little bit of a space here, okay, for completing the square. Now, you can check your work. If you distribute, you're going to get back the negative 2x squared minus 8x. So you might want to just double check. Now, with step 3 here, we're going to want to complete the square by taking b divided by 2 squared. The b is the number that comes in front of the x. So we're going to say b, or in this case 4, divided by 2, that quantity squared. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 squared is equal to 4. Out of thin air, I'm going to add 4 to the right side of the equation. But... Notice that this 4 is in parentheses, and it's multiplied by this coefficient negative 2. So negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. I'm going to want to add negative 8 to this other side of the equation, okay, to keep it balanced. Some students mistakenly just say, oh, I added 4, I'm going to add 4. And that's fine if the leading coefficient is 1. But in actuality, since we're adding 4 out of thin air, it's actually in parentheses. It's like adding negative 2 times 4. You want to make sure you do the same thing to both sides. So now, let's go ahead and simplify. We've got y minus 9 equals negative 2 times this perfect square trinomial, which we basically created by doing the completing the square method. 
we're going to want to go to step number four, which is to factor this trinomial here. And remember that little trick I was telling you, you can always take half of this b value and then it's the quantity squared. So half of four is two, so that's like x plus two squared. Again, you can check your work by writing x plus two times x plus two and multiplying it out. Make sure to bring down your a value. And then that last step is to get y by itself. And we're gonna do that by adding nine to the other side of the equation. And so now you can see we have y equals negative two times the quantity x plus two squared plus nine and this is in our vertex form. Now you can see, remember this is a x minus h, which means that this is really like x minus a negative two, or you can just remember what's grouped with the x has the opposite effect on the graph. So plus two would actually be shifting left two, and then the plus nine is gonna shift the graph up nine. So that's where our vertex is. Now the a value, because it's negative, means our parabola is gonna be opening down, and the two is gonna be stretching it, which is gonna make it a little bit narrower. But for right now, let's just focus on getting it into that vertex form. Let's take a look at another example. If you feel like you're getting the hang of this, try this number three on your own. We've got f of x equals 3x squared minus 6x plus 5. How would you write that in the vertex form? Let's follow the steps. So if I was going to do this one, I would think of f of x as y, and I would just subtract 5 to kind of get it out of the way. So I call that just moving the constant. So that's going to give us y minus 5 equals 3x squared minus 6x. Okay, now we want to factor out the leading coefficient, or what's sometimes referred to as the a value. And you don't want to factor out the greatest common factor, like 3x, you just want to factor out this 3. So I'm going to factor out a 3, that's going to give us uh, x squared minus 2x, and then I like to leave a little space for completing the square. And you might want to make a note, step 2.5, leave a little space for completing the square, if you like this method. So now, Let's go ahead and complete the square, which we're going to take b divided by 2, the quantity squared. So our b value is the number that comes in front of the x. So we're going to say, hmm, negative 2, you can do this work off to the side, divided by 2, squared is equal to what? That's negative 1 squared, which is 1, so this is going to be plus 1. But because it's in parentheses, 3 times 1 is 3, to keep things balanced, we're going to have to add 3 to the left side. So you might want to make a note there that you're going to want to make sure you add the same thing to both sides. So that might be step 3.5. So this gives us y minus 2 equals 3 times x squared minus 2x plus 1. Now this quantity here in parentheses is a perfect square trinomial. We're going to want to factor it as a binomial squared, okay, or a perfect square. And remember that little shortcut method I told you how it's always half of that b value here? So half of negative 2 is negative 1. If this was plus 2x, I'd put plus 1. Make sure to bring down that a value. And we're almost there. The last step is you want to get the y by itself. And we're going to do that by adding 2 to the other side of the equation. And let's see what we end up with. So y is equal to 3 times the quantity x minus 1 squared plus 2. That's in vertex form. And our vertex is going to be at positive 1. Remember, this is the opposite. This is the same, so 1 comma 2, the 3 is stretching it, it's positive, it's opening up, and you can go on to graph it from there, but for right now, let's focus on getting into the vertex form. Let's try one more example, a little bit more challenging one. Okay, for number 4, we've got f of x equals negative 1 half x squared minus 3x plus 1. How do we put that into the vertex form by completing the square? Well, see if you can try this one on your own to challenge yourself, but I'm going to work through these steps. So for step one, I'm going to subtract one to get the constant to the other side, just to kind of move it out of the way. f of x is like y, so we're going to say this is y minus 1 equals negative 1 half x squared minus 3x. Now we're going to want to factor out that leading coefficient, or that a value. In this case, it's negative 1 half. So we don't want to factor out the greatest common factor, just the a value. So this is negative 1 half, okay, times the quantity x squared plus 6x. Leave a little space to complete the square. Now you might be a little bit confused now. Why did I get this 6x? Well, when you factor out a negative 1 half, it's like dividing out a negative 1 half. To counterbalance that, you have to multiply by the reciprocal. So what I did is I multiplied what was on the inside of the parentheses by negative 2. 
You can check your work by distributing to make sure you're on the right track. So negative one half times x squared is negative one half x squared. Negative one half uh, times the six x gives you back the negative three x. Okay, so you're with me so far. Now what we wanna do is we wanna complete the square by using this b divided by two, the quantity squared process, right? So we're gonna take our b value, which is the number in front of the x. We're gonna say six divided by two. Let's do that work on the side. Six divided by two squared. Now this b kind of looks like the number six, but don't get confused. So it's the b value, the number in front of the x divided by two squared. Six divided by two is three, and three squared is equal to nine. Now this is always gonna be positive because when you square something, it's always positive, right? But look what happened, it's actually negative one half times nine, which is negative 4.5. So I really have to add a negative 4.5 to the other side of the equation so I don't change anything, I keep it balanced. Okay, now let's keep going. Y minus 5.5 is equal to negative one half times the quantity x squared plus six x plus nine. So what would you do from here? So now we're on to step number four, you wanna factor. I just realized I forgot to tell you guys something, and that's that if you like the way that I explain things, I have an Algebra 1 and an Algebra 2 video course for sale. Like one of the courses has like 85 lessons, the other one has like 87 lessons, and I walk you through step by step building on the previous concept, you know, one after another so that it walks you through a typical Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 slash college algebra course. So check out those video courses if that's something that you want to dive deeper and kind of learn more with me, uh, that's a great resource. So link in the description. But now going on here, step number four, factoring. Remember that little trick I, I was telling you about earlier? It's half of this b value, so it's gonna be x plus three squared. If this was minus six x, I would write minus three. And if you're not sure, at any point if you're doing this right, you can do things like distributing, or in this case, x plus three squared, you could FOIL or write this twice and then multiply by negative one half. You can kind of retrace your steps to make sure that you haven't changed anything. You're just basically rewriting it in a slightly different format. So now we're almost there. Step number five, we want to get the y by itself. So instead of subtracting 5.5, let's go ahead and add 5.5 to both sides to keep it balanced. And so that comes out to y equals negative one half the quantity x plus three squared plus 5.5, or you can write this as a fraction, that would be 11 over two. And then that's in our vertex form, so that means our vertex is gonna be at where? Negative three, remember this one's the opposite, positive 5.5, remember this one's the same, and that's your vertex. So great job if you're able to follow these four examples. If you want more practice or you just wanna see some more examples, check out a previous video that I did talking about how to write a quadratic function in vertex form by completing the square in that video right there. I'll see you over in that video.